So we're recording. And hi, everybody. It's Jessica and Amanda and all the goats and the alpacas today at Big Heart Ranch here in beautiful, on the warm side, Malibu. I think it's probably close to 80. We're getting a, a little heat spill. But it's supposed to cool down this weekend, so we'll be happy because the animals are a little toasty today. The pigs had their little bath earlier. Goats are hanging out in the shade and getting some sun. So I thought it would be interesting today to learn a little bit about alpacas. We have two alpacas, two male geldings at the ranch, which means that they've been castrated and can't reproduce. Um, and this beautiful chestnut alpaca is Luke. And Luke probably weighs about 180, 150 pounds, somewhere around there. And the way that you can tell an alpaca from a llama is the shape of their ears. And also the, um, let me just let Chris in here, admit. And the sheer size of them, they are, llamas are like 400 pounds. So they're a very different size than alpacas. And um, they have interesting tendencies. Llamas can be very fierce. They can protect a whole herd of sheep or chickens or turkeys. Um, they are known to be the protectors of the herd and they will sound off if they see a predator. Whereas alpacas are a little bit less um, of a overt protector, but they still are a protector of the herd and they function best with at least one other of their kind. So Luke and uh, Thunder are white alpaca, are in separate pens, but they are in with a herd of goats. And Luke is with a large a group, of, a group of goats, that's a tongue twister, a Nubian but goats, which are the larger. And he's happy as a clam in here. Yeah. So we have, I have a little slide presentation. I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll see what is happening here. <laughs> Can't seem to get it to, to switch. Let's see. Okay. So here we go. Go back to the first slide. So amazing, adorable alpacas. So clearly they're the fuzziest, cutest little things you've ever seen, right? They come in 22 different colors as far as their fur goes. Um, it's actually called fiber. And it's very sought after because the fibers do not have any lanolin, which is a really allergenic substance. It's a waxy ester that a lot of people think that um, they're allergic to sheep's wool when really it's the lanolin. So you can have an alpaca sweater or mittens or scarf and not have the same allergenic um, effect. So that's pretty fabulous and fantastic. Um, let's see, where are the origins? The origin of an alpaca, they're in the family of the Bactrian camel, which is the two humped camel. And those originated in ancient um, Bactria, which is now what we know as Afghanistan and Uzbekistan and all those um, stands in the Central Asia Plateau. And yeah, yeah boy. Um, and they were brought over probably in, you know, 4,000 years ago to Central America and South America where they flourished. And then they've been um, brought up to North America as well, where they've kind of taken um, a popularity and so people breed them for their fibers and for the protection in the herds if you have uh, live uh, poultry. So that's the uh, the different ancestry. So their closest cousins um, genetically are the vicuñas which are pictured here on the left hand side these cute little South American similar to um, the um, uh, alpacas in their looks, they're dainty. And then the llama, which is their distant cousin, which is much larger. You can see the body is about 400 pounds. And then in the middle is the Bactrian camel, the ancestor to them. And what's an alpaca like? What is their demeanor like? So generally speaking, they're a very gentle, docile am animal. Hi, precious girl. And they're not aggressive by nature. Some people say that they um, are afraid of them kicking them or spitting at them, but you really have to be provoking one or uh, frightening them for them to spit. 
Typically, the llama is more likely to spit, and it's usually like a regurgitation of one of their uh, ruminant chamber chambers, so it can have some material in it, like hay and um, digestive juices, so it's not a pleasant thing, but um, it's sort of an overhyped rumor that alpacas do that as frequently as llamas, because they, from what I read, uh, alpaca owners say that they don't do it very frequently. Um, so alpacas do occasionally spit, but it's not, not as often as you think. Could be over competition for food, um, or maintaining their territory. They rarely spit on people unless, um, like we were talking about, if you're maybe per, uh, per preparing to shear them, for instance. But a goat can spit on you, like I just got. Um, and a horse can spit on you, like I've been snotted on by Jed last time. And um, yeah, so you just never know. Animals are animals, right? And um, so they also do this really interesting thing to communicate. They c communicate through humming. And um, I'm, there's links on YouTube, and I think I put one at the bottom of this presentation for you to check out. It's a really interesting thing how the herd will start to hum as their communication. And they make very good alarm calls when they're threatened by predators. And there's a different sound that they'll make, including clicks and snorts. But the best known that they're uh, usually known for is the humming. So alpacas are interesting animals. They're mammals and they're also a ruminant animal similar to cows and sheep and any other type of grazing animal. So they have these four stomach chambers or digestive cha chambers and so they'll um, use their incisor teeth to yank out some fibrous grass or hay and then they will chew that up with the back teeth which are more flat teeth and they'll grind it and flatten the um, material and then they'll swallow it down into the first stomach and then it'll go into the second stomach or chamber and then they'll regurgitate it. They'll re regurgitate it is what they call it um, partially digested material and they'll regurgitate it back into their mouth, continue to chew it and then when they swallow it down the second time you may not die. Um, there's Lou, there's Sender. When they swallow it down the second time, it goes past the first and second chambers, and it goes into the third and fourth. So that's a really interesting um, digestive process. And hi, Rosie. Hi, good girl. So here are really good pictures of the types of alpacas that you can see. They're um, basically differentiated by the type of fiber that they have. And the majority of alpacas are the huakea, which are the um, fuzzier ones with the crimped hair. And then 10% of the alpacas are surrey. And they have a different, rarer fiber, and it's long like a dreadlock. And when they spin that or make that into a fiber, it's extremely sought after. It's very soft and um, very expensive. So the life cycle. Alpacas are mammals and they're also prey animals. So their eyes are on the sides of their head, similar to Jed, who's our donkey, and Marilyn and Selma, who are mini donkeys, and all the goats. So they are looking out the sides of their face or head for predators in um, basically almost a 360 degree fashion because of the way that their eyes are situated. Whereas a predator has eyes in the front of their head for focus. And alpacas are, um, able to have a baby at about six months old and the babies are called Kriya and a female is called a Hembra and a male is called a Macho and clearly you can see that those names are from South American uh, origin. And the Hembra, the, the mommy, will carry her Kriya for about 11 and a half months and then she gives birth to a live birth, a live baby, hopefully. And the babies will wobble and learn to stand within a few hours. It is the cutest thing if you have some time, check out the um, YouTube links on, on uh, alpacas giving birth. It's just the most precious thing. And the babies are something else. And they will again begin suckling milk and they will nurse until their mother starts to teach them to eat grass, which is after a few weeks. And they typically have a lifespan of 15 to 20 years, and some of them can live as long as 25. There was a woman who um, was on YouTube, and her uh, oldest female was 25 in her herd. So it's not uncommon. It's really about the care and uh, diet and lifestyle. And I found this really fascinating. They have such a unique palate. They have teeth on the bottom of their mouth. Um, maybe I can show you guys up close if I can get Luke to come back over and eat. 
Is he warming up to you, Amanda? Is he? Hi, baby. Amanda's trying to coax. He's like, don't come near me with that thing. Yes. So they've got these interesting incisor teeth on the bottom. I put this little diagram up for you. And the top of their palate is gum. It's flat gum, like the, the hard palate of inside your mouth. So they'll rip the, the grass out and then they'll um, press it against that palate. And then they take it to the back of their mouth where those flat teeth, the molars will grind it and, um, and pulverize it and then they'll swallow it down. And then they have these really sharp um, fighting teeth, the canines. And those occasionally you need to have those trimmed by a qualified vet or somebody that um, also does the, the feet trimming. They typically will be able to teach you how to do that. If you're not comfortable, then you can obviously have somebody do that for you. And um, they do not have any enamel on the backside of these incisor teeth down here. So they continuously grow throughout their lifetime and they have to be filed down or trimmed down. So you can see this picture of this little white one. You can see the soft palate up there or the hard palate and then the incisor teeth. It's kind of an interesting um, shape. And they will continuously um, at regular intervals lose these incisors and then have new ones grow in. So that's another interesting fact um, about their teeth. So you really do need to look into the care. And along with their teeth being needing to be trimmed, you'll also want to have their toes trimmed because on the front part of their hoof, they have a portion that continuously grows as well. So Luke and, and Thunder here at the ranch, they have a large amount of dirt area where they can constantly grind down those toes. So they don't have such a problem, but we do have the vets still check them when they come out and um, every couple of months, maybe every six months, depending on their wear, they'll need to have those trimmed. And again, if you are raising alpacas, you could easily learn to do that for yourself because they're, um, if you had handled your alpaca from birth, you could um, have them get accustomed to that. So that's not something that you would necessarily have to have a vet teach you to do, but um, if you're new to getting an alpaca and you haven't gentled it, then you might need to have the vet do it for you. So those are some of the things that um, in, in terms of special care you need to look out for. And so what are the, some of the best things about having an alpaca besides that they're super cute to look at? Um, they're excellent guard dogs or guard animals because they'll keep your predators safe. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, predators away from your um, flock. So if you were a chicken farmer or you had sheep or you were out with turkeys, you could easily have the alpacas be in there with them and they will cohabitate and be super guardian guardians of them. Rosie's down here scratching against. Hi, Rosie. Hi, baby girl. She's going to get into a new position. Yes, she is. She was rubbing up against the little stand here from my computer. And alpacas have lovely fiber, which is lightweight. It doesn't have that greasy, waxy uh, ester known as lanolin, which is a very allergenic substance. Hi, Rosie. Can't we brush you? Are you itchy? Stand by for pig intermission. Stand by for pig intermission. Oh, itchy, scratchy belly. Oh, rub the belly. Rub the belly, Rosie. Yeah. Oh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. That's a good girl. Yeah. She loves a good belly rub. Yes, she does. And you can also um, potty train your alpaca. Who knew? The, one of the advantages that farmers uh, have spoken about is that a herd of alpacas will make one single dung pile. Whereas if you look around in the goat pen here, there's like little pellets basically everywhere because they just will go wherever they are. They'll just go to the bathroom. But with alpacas, they're intelligent and they want to use one little area. So you could essentially have a much cleaner pasture. You could have them um, uh, actually even be in the house. Some people have their alpacas in the house. So that's an advantage. <clears throat> And it makes being an alpaca farmer a lot um, easier as far as the cleanup goes. So let's go and see if we can observe little Thunder. Did Thunder come over? There he is. Hi, Thunder. Let's see if he'll warm up to Amanda's treat. Mm -hmm. Hi. 
Olivia. She says, what do you have, Auntie Jess? He was a little shy the other day when Susie was in here, but he, he's also able to be haltered along with Thunder, I mean, along with Luke. So both of them, um, with time and patience and getting to know them, they will warm right up to you. But by nature, they're shy and a little bit more hesitant. Yes. Hi, Thunder. Hi, baby. Hi. And you can see his little ears don't have quite the banana shape and the long length of the llama's ears. If you look at side-by-side -side photos, you can really tell the difference. At first I thought that they had curved ears. Hi, sweet pea, hi. You can come over and say hi. Um, but then I looked at, and on closer inspection, you can tell that they really don't have the long banana-shaped ears that I thought. So you can see his little toenails that are grown out. Yes, we'll see about maybe getting a trim soon. And they should be shorn or sheared once a year because of their fiber. Um, depending on the climate, these were originally from cooler north um, mountainous areas in South America. So they're accustomed to a damp climate that's cooler. So in, in the summertime, they usually get sheared. And that's, um, um, yes, it looks like Leo watered them down this morning. So he's got, he's gotten his little cool shower. And they do okay. We watch them in the summertime for overheating because if they start panting or anything like that, you need to be aware of that and instantly give them something to cool them off. That's good, Tender. Yeah. Yeah. So they also can have a vegetarian diet because they're grass eating um, ruminants. They can be eating the same hay that the goats have. And we feed them Timothy grass, which is fine for their digestion and they can mash on that and nibble on it all day long. They're vegetarians, so they wanna have, you could probably give them any type of vegetable that, that you can think of, but maybe with a limited amount uh, for cruciferous because those can be bloating and gaseous forming. So, and always you know, introduce your food slowly with just a small amount to see how they handle it. Just because they want to eat it doesn't necessarily mean it's good in large My dog would just go crazy for a box of chocolates, but hey, that's the best thing. Yes. If you ever have the opportunity to go visit an alpaca farm or come to Big Heart Ranch when we reopen, I highly recommend it. Their very calm demeanor is just so, it's just naturally calming. Hi, sweetheart. They've got the sweetest eyes and such a gentle manner. Yes. Hi, baby. Are you nibbling? So you can kind of see the little hard palate in his little mouth. And your teeth look so beautiful. Yeah, you've ground them down. They look nice and short. Yes, they do. Yeah. Pretty babies. Yeah, you gonna go say hi? You gonna go say hi? It's so interesting to see their little relationships and who partners with who, you know? Are you going to be friends with him? Yes. Friends are good. Oh, that's a good one. You have an itch there, buddy? I was reading an interesting fact that you can, well, not can, but they can be trained. And one of the things that uh, I was reading about is their back hocks, which is the back part of their back leg. If you touch it, they're really sensitive. So that's something that they will kick out for. So some people train them to like do tricks on command because they can use that natural reflex to have them do a, a little training. Are you itchy? I have a friend here. I have a friend. I have a friend here. Yes, yeah, say hello. Say hello, Big Heart Ranch people. Hello, friends out there. Yeah, so sweet. The goats are so fun. So we have an interesting dynamic. We have the goats that basically have less um, boundaries. They'll come up and they impede your space. So you have to teach yourself and visitors to maintain that boundary sometimes. And then you have other animals that want their personal space and you have to maintain and respect that you can't always just do what you want and impede their personal space. So you have to be patient and sort of um, work with what they're comfortable with, which is it's an interesting thing. You can work on both here at Big Heart Ranch. 
and just being um, calm and aware of what the animals are reacting like. Um, is he supposed to be back there getting all sneaked into that area? You want to see? I'm just saying, let's walk up there and see. Yes. It's a calm day, isn't it, girls? Are you getting into mischief? What are you doing, bud? It's getting kind of narrow in there. You're going for the snacks, aren't you? Yes. Those are good snacks, aren't they? Yes. Getting into mischief. <laughs> we'll have to back out of there. Yeah. Hi, guys. We've got their little hammocks. Yeah, so at Big Heart, we just got these donated, these little pots, and we had some really nice um, pig beds donated by Blankets of Love right here for Rosie. And these are removable covers so they can be washed. And those are all wonderful donations that we rely upon because, well, we couldn't do it without the donations. Hey, Lou. Come here, buddy. Say hi. Come here. Says, I don't think so. It's shady over here. I'm going to stay over here. Hi, beautiful. Hi. Hi, beautiful. That's a handsome boy. That's just a very handsome boy. And he's got his little pack, friends. Yes, he does. Hi, beautiful. Yeah. So I wonder if anybody has logged on here. I'll forgot to take this off of share screen, which is my bad. So I'll stop sharing here. And remind me later. Let's see. Okay, that's better. And don't see anybody else. So we'll say bye for now. I hope you guys learned a little bit about alpacas. Hi, ladies. Hi, friends. Hi, friends. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're beautiful. And there's Olivia, our little certified therapy goat. Yeah, she's a pretty girl, too. Say hi, everybody. Say hi, Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, Thunder? Yeah. He's got those long bangs to help keep the sun out of his eyes and the insects away, which is really helpful. Yes. Yeah. Hi, baby. Hi, I'm okay, and you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Just watching how beautiful you are. Just watching how beautiful you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go say goodbye to over here. He's back in the hay bin, having some more snacks. That's the thing about ruminant animals. They're constantly eating. They're constantly eating, right? Say bye, Luke. Say bye to everybody. Yeah, say bye. We'll catch you next time. And hopefully next time we see you, it will be the ranch will be reopened and everybody can come and brush you and take you for a walk and give you some tangerine treat. Yeah. Hi, sweetheart. All right. I'm gonna say hi to Rosie. Say bye to Rosie. Bye, Rosie. Bye, baby girl. She's all cozy in her little corner. She was my sidekick today, helping me out with the computer. All right, you yeah, everybody. I hope you learned a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way, jessica at bigcartranch.org. I'm happy to look something up or answer questions about Luke and Thunder here at the ranch. 
And uh, we'd love to see you guys soon. So hopefully that will happen and crossing our fingers that you guys can all come out and see them in person very soon. So I will sign off for now and I'll see you next week. <laughs>